Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University and Champions, issue number six. This was surprisingly pretty good. This, this gives me hope that the Champions series will actually be good again. No disrespect to what happened before, I am going to address what happened before. First, we're going to talk about this book, because this book, well, it's kind of where we're at. So, the writer is Danny Lohr, the artist is Luciano Vecchio, probably pronounced that wrong, I apologize. Federico Belli, doing the colors, and VCs Clayton Cowles on letters, covered by Tony Infante, and there's a couple of variant covers out there. Always happy to see that, well, not always, but I'm happy to see a couple of variant covers out there for an issue six, a new beginning, uh, whatever, because it says that Marvel actually has some kind of hope that this comic book is going to be successful. They're putting some effort into it being successful. Danny Lore in this Killer App Part 1 uh, arc, really good. This was really good. Listen, you had the dynamic. First off, you had the past. You had the past like back in the Mark Wade days. You had the past in the Jim Zub days. You have the past of the Eve L. Ewing days of the champions, of these characters. There's references to the Eve Ewing um, Ironheart. 2020 story, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and all of that. There's a lot of references to other stories. Now, mind you, Saladin Ahmed is the one who's doing two of these characters in here in their solo stories. Danny Lore is coming in, and he's got to do a team book with a bunch of characters that aren't being used otherwise, and two characters that have their own solo series. This is not an enviable position for this guy to be in. That would be a great reason to give excuse for why this comic book wasn't that great, but I don't actually have to use that, because the comic book was actually pretty damn good for a first issue and an issue number six. I'm shocked that they didn't return this to issue one. Like, this is such a, it's such a Marvel move to bring the issue back to issue one and be like, we're starting all over again. But they're not doing that. And I'm actually really proud of Marvel. Who the hell am I to be proud of? A giant corporate freaking conglomerate that doesn't really care about us. They just care about our money. But I said what I said, damn it. I'm actually really impressed by Marvel doing that. Um, but it doesn't exactly help Danny Lore in this, right? It doesn't help anybody involved in this comic. But things being what they are, I read this. You got Roxon doing a Rocks On app. You've got them trying to understand kids. You've got them hiring people who otherwise don't know what they're doing, but that's the way that the corporate business works, including in the movies. You fail upwards. You don't fail downwards or in politics also. If you fail at something, okay, but at least you have that experience and we know your name. We know who you are. You're on the in club. So you're hired to do this project instead. And it's like, bro, really? You fail upwards in large industries, no matter what it is, you always fail upwards. And that's a lot of what's happening here. Riri's not happy to see this this guy who I can't remember his name in here because for the for the intent of this it's not the most important thing in the world. Um, hopefully they do make me recognize his name. They make me un, you know know his name, uh, and that's on Danny Lore to do. You know the writer. That's on him to do to really make me want to love or hate this character. All the characters in here, but these characters have baggage, and this isn't just like a clean slate. A lot of the lore that's happened, Danny Lore, I love the, what I didn't mean for that pun to happen, but Danny really puts together and he keeps that. So he's read these previous comics. He's been following these stories or he brushed up real quick and he's doing a good job. I, I expect that Danny's a, a guy's name. I hope I'm not misgendering anybody. Honestly, real talk. Got it. So why don't they just have pictures of some of these people also? That would be nice. That would be a nice thing to do. Anyway, it's not like they're paying these guys well. At least giving them, you know, their, their, their pictures in here, for Christ's sakes. Anyway, um, the idea that Roxon is the bad guys again. Yeah, they're the perfect foil to be the bad guys in any freaking Marvel story. Hell, they could be bad guys in DC just because they're that bad. We know they're that bad, for crying out loud, you know? Uh, do a little trade-off. Let me see some Star Labs over here in Marvel once in a while. Just something along those lines. Dude, we really have characters with problems. These are teenagers. And a lot of times I look at some of the problems as a 45-year-old man. I look at the, the problems that these teenagers are coming up with. I'm like, God, I feel like I just don't have time for these stupid problems. Oh, my God. But then I stop and I do the thing that I said that I would, and I think all teenagers do this. I said, and I, and I said this as a kid also, you know, I said, unlike my father and unlike whomever in my family or in the world, I will not forget what it is like to be a kid. I will remember what it is like to be a kid. Well, I don't think any of us are capable of remembering that long ago, <laughs> but 
I do what I can. I do what I can to try and remember what it was like being a kid. And a lot of these problems that I feel like I don't have time for, it's because I've worked out these problems since then. You know what I'm saying? I've dealt with these things, the good, the bad. I've gotten advice, both good and bad. And I've found a way to work around those problems. They're old news for me at this point. And, and this is one of the ways that I'm able to put myself back into the story. Because, yeah, otherwise I would look at this and be like, yeah, I need adults having adult problems. You know what I'm saying? But no, I can still, even though I can't currently relate, I can still remember relate. I can, I can relate through memory to some of these problems. And I know that a lot of the younger kids today, you know, teenagers and whatnot, I promise you they're going to be able to relate to these kinds of problems that the kids are having in this story because they're perfect. How old is Danny Lore for crying out loud? Is this guy like 18, 19? Because it makes sense. <laughs> like these are very real problems. The way that they're handling them, the way that they're dealing with each other, the whole idea of that's it. I'm done. I'm through. I'm never coming back. What? I was going to see you the next meeting. <laughs> what? Seriously? <laughs> like you just said, oh yeah, whatever, man. I was, that was just, I was just mad at the time. The, the, the callous way that we just kind of throw out uh, infinitives, the way that we just throw out uh, dif definitives at the very least. Wow. You know, it's perfect. It's like, well, that's not the word that you should, as an English teacher, you know, say, that's not the word that you should really be using right now then. Shut up about the word I'm supposed to be using. This is the word I'm using, you know? Um, I'm mad. And, and, and I really thought I was never going to come back. But then I, I flew off and I thought about it. Damn it. I remember every time when I was a kid, I would fly off. Usually fly off the handle, but you get the gist. You turn around and you're just like, eh. It's not really that bad or eh, you got to deal with it. Eh, you got to find a way to work through it because the problem's still going to be there. I love this. The champions made a mistake in this book, a mistake that they should have been able to recognize. A lot of them, not just the vision. A lot of them should be, should have been able to recognize this problem. And the others, the, 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 the quote unquote bad guys in this weren't exactly giving any updates onto what happened because, well, they thought they were going to get paid more out of this. They got screwed from a, a corporate business like, you know, freaking Roxxon, an evil corporation. They got screwed, blued, and tattooed out of that legally. What are you going to do? That's what they do. This is real problems. These are real problems, you know? But the champions not only screwed up, which is great because kids screw up. You fall on your face. The trick is you're able to get back up. It's us adults that when we fall on our face, it's like, I think I broke something. I, I think maybe you should call somebody. You know, I got that little life alert thing. I fall and I can't get up. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, that's us old people. You know, say so we can't afford to fall anymore. Kids, kids are malleable. Yeah, you know, boom, you bounce back up. Forget about getting back up. You know what I'm saying? No effect on your knees whatsoever. It's a ricochet effect. It's like living in a Nerf world for crying out loud, and not really. And they do have a lot of animosity towards each other. The vision still isn't forgiven by Riri, right? And she points out, she's like, this is all her fault. Well, in some ways, yeah, maybe she should have recognized that this wasn't a real bank robbery. But, like, this is the kind of drama that you deal with in these kinds of stories. Guys, I'm shocked that new writer and just, boom, we're good. Let's just jump right into this. I love it. I love it. I don't think, I almost feel like, you know, Salvador La Roca and Federico Bleed don't need any more pats on the back because of how good their work individually and together have, have always been. Um, if, if La Roca were half the artist he were, he'd still be okay because Blee is the kind of guy who, when he draws, this is a grandfather. You know, so this, this is a guy who I think, I think Federico's older than I am. Doesn't act like it, but, um, he's a great guy. Um, when he, when he draws an image, you could literally just have stick figures. And when he does the colors for that stick figure, he will give it three dimensionality. I genuinely believe it's like the old saying where if you're a wrestler, if you're worth your salt, you can wrestle with a broom and put on a good match. Salvatore, uh, what do you call it? Um, Federico Bli has the ability to take literally a circle and turn it into a three-dimensional face. He can do that with just his colors, not even picking up a pen or a pencil. He can do that. Don't believe me. Look at some of the images in here. Look at the head of the new head of this app 
this Roxanne app. Look at this little blondie girl. Look at the idea that there is no real definition in her face. It's a circle. And then Federico does all the rest where she looks like a real person with a rounded face as opposed to a circle. You know, the, the two dimensionality becoming three dimensional. That's Federico Blee doing that. And I love that he has this ability to do that. I think we love the ability, the, the idea that he has the ability to do this. And Salvador also, because if Salvador were a lesser artist, he would probably look at this and just be like, uh, uh, let me just rush and do some of these things. Instead, he gets to rely on the idea that Federico can make stick images come to life and, and get up and walk off the paper. But Salvador is no joke himself. And you look at the other things that he does. It's almost like he's sharing. It's almost like he's sharing. Because a lot of the characters in here, there's a lot of definition. There's a whole lot of definition. Background and all sorts of things like that. When you, just let me open up to some random page in here. This is a great example. Here's what I was talking about. Just a couple little squiggly lines, and Federico is doing the rest. He's bringing the face alive. Um, he, even when you talk about the body, like the boobs actually look out. They're just a couple lines. Look, three lines, three lines, and then a little bit, of, a couple lines for the shirt being tucked in. And Federico does the colors and the lighting on here, so it actually looks like three-dimensional boobs. And boobies are always a good thing. I don't care how old you are. Boobies are always a good thing going to move on from there. Um, but then you look at something like this where it's like Federico just, yeah, just, just, you know, color in the, the background. He doesn't just color in the background. He actually makes it, you know, different, you know, uh, what do you call it? A brilliant background also. But even if this were a black and white image, the detail in the lines in here are fantastic. They're fantastic. Look at that. You can see real shock on this. She's the youngest person here by three months. You say like, it's, it's real. It feels like, Bam. And when you when you think about the idea that all the backgrounds here are really just for the most part, except for when Federico changes it up, it's mostly just a generally uh, solid color, right? It's just a plain background. They still wind up when it's just a plain background. It just is. But when you have things like this, there's actually a background to this and some other random page. There's actually cityscapes and things like that. I remember back in the, well, I don't remember the Golden Age, but I remember talking to people who were alive in the Golden Age and did the Golden, you know, drew the, some of the Golden Ages of comics characters when they would just be like, yeah, no, there's no need for backgrounds. Whole bunch of the artists back then, they'd be like, there's no need for backgrounds. Why do you need to do a background? It's only the foreground. You're wasting your time. You're not getting paid to do that. Not really. You can just have blank backgrounds and you're good. The color guy will just be like, boop, and you're good, you know? Um... And then sometimes they would actually get people who wouldn't draw any backgrounds no matter, and they would actually have background artists. So they'd have artists that would go in and draw the background after somebody did the foreground. Like, here's Captain America punching the Red Skull and stuff like that. No background whatsoever. So somebody else would come in and draw, like, a piece of furniture in the room or something like that and just give it a good look. Like, it's amazing you know, when you think about the, 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 the history of comics and art and, and all of that. And when you look in here and you see that Salvador La Roca, it's, it's like he and Federico hang out. They have Cuervos together. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just, they're just sitting back and just talking about, I'm going to give this page to you to really fill up, but this one I'm going to take. Hope you don't mind. You know, it's like they're working together. Like it's, it's a really synch synchronous, uh, synchronistic team that these guys, they know what they can feed off of each other with. It's fantastic. Danny's got the easiest time in the world. All he's got to do is come up with a good story and just be like, draw things. <laughs> he doesn't have to say, I, I needed to draw this and I need to draw. He could literally just be like, here's the story. Uh, what are your notes to the artist? Draw things. He, who cares? Just boom. This, by the names on here, by the art team, it feels like this should be the easiest comic in the world to do, right? And, and it could be, but there's still a great story in here also to boot. This is a really, I went into art history of comic books in here, which I didn't expect to do. I really expected this to be a four minute review and I apologize. And, and also thank you if you stuck around this long. That being said, this is a really good first issue, even though it's issue number six, really good first issue from Danny Lore. I'm looking forward to seeing this book uh, in the future issues. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the storyline continue and I'm also very interested in seeing this team of La Roca and Blee because, wow, I'm just saying. 
Guys, that's it. That's all I got for you. I'm going to actually leave you now. Like the video and watch an ad on your way out. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.